Now let's go into Mono Development and look at the Instantiate command. So in our start method, at the very start of it, we're going to type in Instantiate. And then this takes three commands. First is what you want to instantiate. So we're going to want to instantiate our player prefab. So I'm just going to cut and paste that in. Where you want it to be, I'm just going to put it dead center of our game world, which will be vector3.0. And the rotation in the form of a quaternion. Uh, now, Quaturian has quite a few things you can do with it. I'm just going to use Quaturian Identity, which will be make it face the direction that the game object is in, or its parent in. So if we save that off, start it up, it should create a player character prefab for us. And here we go. Now we can change the name of this if we want. And if you want to change the name of it, you could get a reference to it. So we could say game object. And then a name for the game object. We'll just call it PC for player character. Equals the instantiate command. Because this here actually returns a game object. Then down here, we could just say PC.name. And then whatever you want to call it as a string. I'm just going to call it PC. And we'll take a look. Okay, we have to typecast this as a game object. So I'm just going to say as game object. Restart it. And there we go. So now that we have our game object that our script is attached to, we can actually change what our tune variable is going to hold. We no longer want it to hold a new player character. We want to actually hold the component player character on our new game object. So we want it to point to this. So let's take a look to see what tune is first off. It's a private, so it's the first line. So it's a player character. So we can just say tune. I was going to comment out the old one. And I'm going to say tune is equal to PC. That's what we're using to hold a reference to our game object. Then we're going to get the component. And then we're going to typecast the component that we want, which is player character. Add some parentheses and a semicolon. Now it should work the exact same way that we had before. As you can see, I haven't done anything with my GUI skin since the last time. But everything works. So now let's go back to the new script we're creating, our game setting script. And in the save character data, we're going to get a reference to our character. So game object, we're just going to call it PC again, is equal to game object dot find. And we know it's called PC. So we'll just type in PC. Now we also want to get a reference to the player character class that's attached to it. So over here we'll just say player character. We're just going to call this PC class is equal to PC which is the name of the game object we're creating, get component, and then typecast it. And 
Now to pass in the variable, we can just say PC class dot name. Now we're going to want a way to call this method from our character generation script. So let's go over here. And at the bottom of our on GUI, let's go ahead and add a button. So I'm going to put the button in another function and I'm just going to call it display create button. I'll go to the end of my script to add it. It will be private. And I forget what I called it already. Uh, display create button. Cut and paste it. And for now, I'm just going to display the button. I'm not going to put the if block just because I want to position it. So GUI dot button. Now we've gone over buttons before, so you should know how to do this part. Now I have to figure out where to position it. I know I want it under my vitals, so I'll just go up to see where my vitals is being positioned. And that's right here. I'm just going to cut and paste the whole thing in. And I'll clean that up a bit. Okay. I want to put it in the center of the screen. So I'm just going to say screen dot width divided by two minus the width of my button. I'm going to make the button 100 wide. So I'll do 50. Oh, actually, let's use. Do we set up a button width yet? Uh, we have it as 20. I could again come up here and create some more constants for our create button, but just to make things quicker, I'm just going to type in hard cast the values. Now, as far as the y value goes, I want to use the starting stats position plus 7. Okay, so we're going to add the amount of stats we have here, which is 3 stats. So I'm just going to say 10, uh, making the button 100 wide. And we'll keep the same line height. Let's just see if that worked. I actually have an error. Ah. I'll just hard code this in as 10 times the line height because I have a total of three attribute or three vitals and six attributes. Save that. The errors are gone. We'll hit play. And it's not showing up. Ah, oh, here we are. We're over here. So it is in the center of the screen. I was originally designing my game for a web player. So if we hit play again. There it is. I'm going to turn off my GUI styles because I haven't had a chance to really work on them yet and it just kind of really looks bad. So I'm just going to go up to on GUI and just erase the lines that actually change the skin. Hit play again. I'll get the default skins. And there we go. It's on the screen. I can see it. I could move it over a little bit more, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. What we want to happen is when we hit the create button, it will save our character data, which right now is the only thing we're saving is the name. And then we want it to load into our other scene, which for me was a targeting example, but I redid the project and I don't really remember what I called the initial scene. 
but it's the scene that we have set up to have our mobs attack us. I have mine disabled at the moment. So we'll just stop that. And we'll put the if block in there. So if, whoops, GUI button. Just remember to get rid of the semicolon that you put up here. And then inside of here, we want to put in, well, actually, let's just clean this whole thing up. It might be a little confusing for some people. I prefer it on separate lines. I just find it easier to read for me personally, but not necessarily for everyone else. So we'll just get rid of all the white spaces. And that should be that way. So there we go. We have our if block made. So we're going to want to load the other level, but save it first. So loading the level, other level is easy. We just simply do application dot load level and then insert the name of the level you want to load. Now we might not have gone over how to set levels to be loaded. If you go into Unity, go to File and Build Settings, you'll get a list of all the scenes that you can load up in your game when it's running. And right now I don't have any. Now, there's two ways to do it. You can you can add the current scene just by clicking the button and you can go to each scene and do it or you can actually just go along and take the scenes and drag them in. Now order does matter at least for the first one. You want to make sure you have the scene you want loaded first listed first. Then once you get your scenes listed the way you want just close it, go back in and type the name of the scene you want to load after this one. So when they hit the create button, we want to load, and I forget the name of the scene. It's targeting example. Targeting example. Let's save that. There's no errors. Let's give it a quick check. We'll go to the character generation screen. We hit create. There we go. We switch scenes. Now another way you can refer to these levels when you want to load them, if you go back into build setting, you'll notice you have these numbers over here and that's the index of that particular scene. So instead of saying uh, application load level targeting example, we could actually say one because it will also receive an integer and that will load up whatever scene we have set as index one and of course if we go over and Take a look, index one is our targeting example. So if we save that off, hit play, that works as well. I generally prefer to use the name as I tend to move the levels around quite a bit while I'm building them and this way here I don't have to worry about what index it's at. Plus it's a little more descriptive of what the name of the scene is that I want to load.